Hey guys, I'm Angela Braniff. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of the ways that we save money as a big family. There are 10 of us total in our family, so that's what we're gonna chat about today is I've just got five quick ways that I wanted to share with y'all that we save money. So I've been talking a lot about budgeting and decluttering and getting rid of things and all of that on my channel lately. That's pretty much what all of the content has been about and I have loved it so much. Today I just wanted to share with y'all, uh, like I said, five different ways that we have found to save money as a big family. I also wanna do a video and share with you guys just very truthfully and honestly, like five things that we splurge on as a big family. So if that's something that you would wanna see, be sure to give this video a thumbs up or let me know down in the comments. But in an effort to stay on task in this video, let's go ahead and jump into the five ways that we save money. Okay, so the first one is something that we did back in probably 2011, I think is when we first started doing this and that was when we were starting our first adoption. We were really just getting very frugal and ways to save money. And so at that time we made the decision to just completely cut our cable and we've not looked back. We have not had cable television since then, since 2011. The only thing that we pay for is Netflix and Hulu. We have had zero regrets about making that decision. So it was a good one for us and saves us money. Um, obviously, if you're not really wanting to do that and there's other areas where you, know, you maybe can't, like for example, internet, we can't not pay for internet, but you can always call those providers and ask them for a better rate if another provider is offering some kind of um, special or, or better rate than what you're paying, you can call your current provider and ask them to lower it. And in most cases they will. It's much cheaper for them to keep your business than it is for them to get an entirely new person to replace you if you leave and go somewhere else. So that's actually something you can do with a lot of different things, insurance, entertainment, things like that, like cable or internet, that kind of thing. So always keep that in your back pocket. The second thing is cutting out some subscriptions. I'm just gonna like give y'all numbers because I don't tend to do that and then people ask and I, I don't really care, like I'll just share, it is what it is. So in January, when I started working on our budget for this year and started looking at what we were spending last year and you guys know like I had to come to Jesus about our grocery budget, um, which by the way, some people were kind of freaking out about that. That number, that huge number that we were spending on groceries and stuff was including groceries, eating out, coffee, just anything that was food related. I was gonna say anything you put in your mouth, but I feel like some people might take that wrong. So anything that is food related, it also includes diapers, wipes, household goods, like it, that was like everything. And yes, it was completely out of control because we were spending way too much on eating out. You know, for our family to go to Chick-fil-A, it's like 50 bucks, so it adds up really fast. So once I did that, I started looking at other areas of our budget that might have creeped up out of control. Lifestyle creep is totally a thing, and especially when you get really busy, which is the season we've been in for the last year, I feel like, with, um, with all the things that we have going on, you tend to let certain things slide or forget about things, whatever. So that's the season we were in, that's how we got there. But in January, when I went through our budget and was like, all right, I gotta like, I gotta get a hold of this. Let me figure this stuff out. I cut out $200 a month out of our budget just by canceling subscriptions. Some of those were business things, like business tools that I was subscribed to that I just wasn't using and I needed to cancel. Hairbo subscriptions for the twins some extra homeschooling resources that we really weren't using. I just really went through and looked at like, what are we actually using? Especially when it comes to like homeschooling resources and stuff, there's so many amazing ones out there and I will subscribe to them or pay for the subscription. And uh, I just find that after a few months, the kids aren't using that one anymore, or they've moved on. And you just need to go through and clean that stuff up. So you can always check like your Apple or you know uh, Google Play or wherever you're doing those. But these were also subscriptions that were stuff, that were things that were coming out through like PayPal um, for different like bow subscriptions and stuff like that. So I saved $200 a month by going through and trimming out certain subscriptions. The other little quick thing I wanted to add was if there is a subscription that you really love, especially like uh, maybe particularly like homeschooling related ones, a lot of times they will have affiliate programs. So if you will, you know, if you share it on Instagram or share it and people sign up through your link, then you get money towards your subscription. So that's always, if it's something you really love and you don't wanna lose, but you wanna cut out a little bit of money, there's also an option there to share it with friends or family or you know people who follow you on Instagram or whatever, just anybody who might enjoy that particular thing as well. If they use your link, then you can make some money and pay for your own subscription that way. 
Okay, the third thing is utilizing rewards apps. This video is not sponsored in any way by any of these companies, I just wanna say that right now. Um, but I do have a few rewards apps that we have used over the years that I actually have found to be incredibly beneficial. I mean, sometimes they do seem too good to be true, which might contribute to people like not signing up because they think like, well, is that really? But these I've been using for a long time. So let's just get into it. Okay, so Ebates, it was formerly Ebates, now it's called Rakuten. Nobody polled me on that name change because I would have voted against it, but whatever, it's not my, not my company. However, I will tell you that um, by using that app, I have, I'm trying to pull it up so I can show you guys because I don't want you to just think I'm, I'm full of it. Okay, big fat check history. In total, I've been using this app for a few years now. My total lifetime cash, uh, cash back balance is $9,283. Sorry, we're losing our lighting. So we've got some weird lighting situation, but y'all will understand, I know. Um, so I think it's once a quarter that you get your big fat payment, they call it. And so when you're shopping basically through like, you know, Lyft or Domino's or Grubhub or Groupon, Macy's, Pro Flowers, Zales, Nike, all of these different stores, you shop through this app, you start here and you get cash back at 4%, 7%, 10%. When I buy like things like pieces of furniture or something like that, I don't always remember on tiny purchases, but on big purchases, I'm always checking here. Walmart's on here often. And then they will also do um, double cash back on certain sites, like right now, uh, Pro Flowers was 12, now it's 30%. So if you were gonna send flowers to somebody for Valentine's, you get 30% back into this account. And then once a quarter, they mail you a check. So like I said, my lifetime cash back is over $9,000. The next check I have coming to me is for $475 and I'll get that in February. And yeah, you can earn money through referral links as well if you share it with your friends or family or whatever. So I will put my link down below in the description box if you guys haven't tried Rakuten, then you should definitely check that out. And then the other app that we use a bunch, which this video is not sponsored, they did sponsor a video over on my vlog channel. We've worked with them a couple of times, but it's an app that we use all the time. So that's why I wanna share it here with you. It's called Drop App. And so that one we use a lot with like our grocery orders and our Instacart orders. And the way that one works is instead of giving you straight cash, which, which is why I love Rakuten or Ebates so much is because you actually just get a check with cash. But I also really like Drop App because you get points and then you turn those points in and you get gift cards. And so you'll get gift cards to like Old Navy, um, Starbucks, lots of different places are on that app. Even Everlane is on there. So you'll turn in your points and you'll get a $50 Starbucks gift card or a $50 Old Navy gift card for your points. And then you can use that towards, you know, buying kids clothes and stuff like that. So it's just kind of one of those things that's like, we're already buying groceries. We're already gonna use the Instant Cart or whatever. If we just go through this app first, we either get cash back or points that turn into gift cards. So for us, that's just a huge way that we have um, saved money and made money on purchases that we were already gonna make anyways. I'm telling you, it's not too good to be true. The proof is in the pudding. So that's the third way. The fourth way that we uh, save money is, like I said, there's been different points in our life where we have uh, needed to be really, really tight and really frugal for various reasons. And when we come upon that time, but we still want to be able to have a date night or eat out, I've talked about this before, Costco is like our go-to for a date night or for taking our kids out to eat because we can get a whole pizza for $10. Um, we also sometimes will do Little Caesars pizza for the kids, but I don't really love Little Caesars pizza as much as Costco pizza is good pizza. Or we do their hot dogs. I'm sad they got rid of the Polish dog, but whatever. The hot dogs for $1.50, that's a hot dog and a drink. So we can take our all of our kids there and feed them for like 10 to $15 versus 50, 40 to $50 at Chick-fil-A or someplace like that. So now there are ways to make Chick-fil-A cheaper, like ordering you know, a tray of nuggets instead of individual meals and stuff like that. That's not what this video is about. But I do think that Costco is a really great, um, affordable way to eat out. If something's happened and we can't you know, get together dinner at home or we're out of whatever and we need to get something and we need to get it quick and we don't wanna spend a lot of money, Costco is just kind of our go-to place for hot dogs and pizza that is very, very affordable. In fact, there used to be a dollar movie theater right behind Costco. So when Ciara and I were in the process of trying to fund our adoptions and really needing to save every single penny, we would do our date night there and we would go get a dollar fifty hot dog and then go to the dollar movie theater and for less than 10 bucks we would have a date night so 
that was back when my sister used to live in our neighborhood, so she'd babysit the kids for free. Um, anyways, I digress. There are ways to do things very cheaply. Okay, and the last thing is talking about sports and activities for our kids. So having eight children, we cannot, there's just not enough hours in the day for our kids to all be involved in like three different activities and constantly be going to places and doing things. So the, so the way we handle it for our family and what works for us is allowing our children to be in one activity and we wait to put them in activities until they are old enough to tell us what they wanna do. I have done the whole taking cute little tiny children to dance class or we took Noah when he was like two and a half, we put him in like this little kid toddler soccer, right? I think it was called like soccer shots and it was a Saturday morning soccer thing for little kids. It was such a waste of money. He, he thought he was Forrest Gump. He just ran, like you, we put him down and he just ran like across the field. The coach was like, come back, we're kicking balls over here. And Noah just ran as far as the eye could see, just ran. It truly was a Forrest Gump moment. I was just like, and he's running. That's, that's what he's doing. He, it was like herding cats, okay? He wouldn't stay over by, and, and a lot of the kids were like that. And I just thought, this is miserable. Why are we spending money for this? This is miserable. And that was when I decided that I'm not just gonna put my kids in activities just to do it. I always feel like I need to preface these things with like, do what works for you. If you are super into sports and you really want your kid to be, or you think they're a savant at something and you just really wanna pound the pavement with that from the age of two, you do you boo. But I'm just telling you that like, one of the ways we save money is to not pour money into activities that our kids aren't interested in, that they don't wanna do. And kind of the other piece of that and way that we save money is if you're a homeschooling family, a lot of those places will have a homeschooling class. So like we've done a homeschooling gymnastics class. So it's usually during the week in the middle of the day. And oftentimes those classes are cheaper than the evening and weekend classes. So we'll look at that stuff too. And then also checking rec centers because rec centers often have much more affordable uh, options for kiddos to do different things and try different things. My sister and I took uh, swimming lessons at a rec center and I'm pretty sure all the classes there were free when we were kids, but we did swimming lessons and then we even took baton lessons there. So just kind of thinking out of the box there and like I said, looking for things on off times and stuff like that so that they're more affordable. And then just like I said, waiting for us until our kids are actually interested in something so that we're not driving all over hell and half of Georgia for something that a child is like not even into and they're running around like a wild cat or something, you know? All right, so those are just some of the ways that we save money as a big family. A lot of that stuff can work for you whether you have a big family or not. Some of it is stuff that obviously we do because we have a big family and so it's just, the more logical and affordable way to do things. But hopefully you found something in this video helpful. Let me know if you guys want to see um, a video that's like five things we splurge on um, as a big family. I always think that kind of stuff is interesting because everybody's just kind of different in what they prioritize and what they'll spend money on and what they won't and that kind of thing. So let me know if you want to see that. Also, if you guys have any other great outside of the box kind of money saving tips, leave those down below in the comments. I feel like that's always super helpful for people when they can come to a video like this and not just hear what I have to say, but also the community here, because I'm telling you, you guys are a very knowledgeable group. And when you share your insight in a kind way is very helpful in the comments. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you again very soon. Yeah, oh Susan, I can't think.